evening, everyone, and good morning to all our uh, viewers from across the globe. I'm Ravinder Kumar, Marketing Manager, India, representing St. Thomas University. So a warm welcome uh, once again, and I think we are live now. So St. Thomas University or you can also call us too, is a liberal art university located in Fredericton, the capital of New Brunswick, Canada. It is primarily undergraduate university offering bachelor's degree in the arts under humanities and social science, education and social work to approximately 1900 plus students from 40 plus different countries across the globe. What make us special or what exactly St. Thomas University is. So we are established in 1910, an 110-year-old reputed university of Canada. Our campus is located in Fredericton, New Brunswick, one of the greatest tourist destinations in Canada. We also call ourselves a small university of big opportunities because of the 97% student satisfaction rate. So we have a wide range of bachelor programs to offer at the campus. We today, we especially are going to talk about one of the most popular and demanding programs of the St. Thomas University. They are like uh, international communication and journalism, communication and public policy, focusing endless opportunities with these programs. So we welcome to all our panelists from the university and our brilliant students who are here to assist with everything. So I'll make you introduce with the faculty members and with our students. So Ms. Catherine Crawford, uh, our director of admissions from St. Thomas University. Uh, then Natalie Courier, our admission counselor experts also in communication and public policies. Then our brilliant students, Megan Gibson, and Ms. Estonia Martinez. Welcome you all on the board and uh, a warm welcome from all our viewers across the globe and from India itself. Now, uh, Catherine, over to you. Thank you so much, Ravinder. I'm going to take a minute and share my screen. There we are, and hopefully you can all see uh, my presentation. Uh, first, I'd like to thank MSM for welcoming us here for this presentation to speak with you. This is such a great opportunity to talk about one of my favorite things to talk about, St. Thomas University, and I'm so pleased to be here to do this. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to, there we go. My name is Kate Crawford, and I'm the Director of Student Recruitment at St. Thomas, and I'm also a proud STU graduate. After graduation, I have started working at the university and I work in admissions, scholarships, recruitment, and I'm, again, so happy to be able to share this information with you. The first thing that I wanted to talk about, and I'm gonna keep this fairly a brief overview of the university because I know that you're here to learn more about these specific programs, but I just wanna give you maybe a 10 minute overview of the types of things that students can expect from St. Thomas. So the first thing I wanted to mention is that we're on the east coast of Canada, located in the province of New Brunswick. We're about a one hour drive from the border of the US, Maine, and we border on Nova Scotia as well. So we're really located in a beautiful spot. It's a safe, diverse, welcoming community um, that has a high quality of life, lots of opportunities for nature, and very good immigration policies, especially for students who are studying. So if people are interested in immigration, studying at St. Thomas might be something to consider. St. Thomas is located in the capital of New Brunswick, Fredericton. And Fredericton is one of the best places for students to be. Uh, we have St. Thomas University. We have the University of New Brunswick, New Brunswick Community College, and a lot of private colleges and universities. So it's a very young city. In September, when the students arrive, uh, the population is focused on that age group. So there isn't so much for students to do. There's music and art festivals, cultural and farmers markets. We have restaurants and shops and hundreds of kilometers of biking and hiking trails. There's a river that runs through the middle of the city and it's incredibly safe. 
Another important thing to note about Fredericton is that we are the capital of New Brunswick. And so there's government and industry. And for students who are looking for opportunities to um, do internships and experiential learning and get experience, being in the capital city really makes a difference because there are so many opportunities for them to get jobs and experiences that are going to look really meaningful on their resume when they graduate. So this is a great place for your students to be. St. Thomas itself is located right in the heart of Fredericton, right in the middle of the city. And some things that are a little bit different or unique about St. Thomas is that within Canada, we're the only university focused exclusively on a Bachelor of Arts degree. So if you're speaking with students who might be looking at the US, maybe some of the small liberal arts colleges like Bowdoin or Colby or Bates, St. Thomas is very similar. We're a small liberal arts college, similar programming and reputation, but at a fraction of the cost because the Canadian government subsidizes education. So it might be something to consider Canada um, for that small liberal arts experience. We are primarily undergraduate, as Ravinder said, and that means that 99% of our professors have the highest degree in their fields, and they're teaching students right away in their first class, first degree, first year. So a student just entering the university would get the benefit of experts in the field that they're studying. Our students would never be taught a class by a graduate student. It's always those top level professors. And we are a very small community. So approximately 2000 students, um, represented from 40 different countries and about 200 international students. So it's a diverse community and we're always looking to diversify more. So we really want more international students on our campus. Uh, and this means that especially when you're sending students uh, to a new country, they're entering a small community where they're gonna get to know people and be very comfortable. So those are some of the benefits uh, when, about St. Thomas. When I say small, you would never have a class bigger than 60, and this helps with that liberal arts style of education. Students, in, they're never in large auditoriums full of people. Large is 60, the average is half that size, so they can always ask questions, get involved in class discussions, and get to know students and professors um, even better while they're studying. As Ravinder mentioned, we have all of these programs, and I wanted to be sure that you saw a list of programs um, but we're going to focus on communications and public policy, international relations, and journalism. But as students are studying those programs, they can also take advantage of courses in each of these areas as well. Apart from that, we have professional programs in social work and a post-degree Bachelor of Education. So if students came for four years, did a Bachelor of Arts, one year Bachelor of Education, five years total, and they'd be able to become teachers in our school system. Experiential learning is something we put a high value on at St. Thomas, and it's become a real area of focus for us. Um, some of these opportunities include a partnership that we have with Harvard University. So if a student is taking communications and public policy, and they're more interested in the business side of communications, they could also take economics, economics with business. And then through the summer, they have the opportunity to take this course with Harvard University. So when they graduate, they have a certificate of business readiness credential, which looks great on a resume. Moot court would be another one of these opportunities if students are thinking about law or even if they would just like to work on their communication, debate, research and writing skills, they might want to consider our moot court class. And this is where they're able to argue a simulated case in front of a simulated Supreme Court and we participate in competitions and we always do really, really well. So this is another thing that would look excellent on a resume for students when they graduate. And then as I was saying about Fredericton and, and the opportunities that exist for work, there are we work with students um, on internships, 100% of them are paid or else they get uh, credit for them in their university studies. And we match students with areas that match their goals after they graduate so that they're able to get networking and experience within the field in which they want to work. We have international exchanges. So when students come, they can go for six months or a year and study at another university internationally, or they can even do short-term experiences for a week in New York or a couple of weeks in the summer in Italy. So there are opportunities for travel within the degree. And then for students coming from away to study in a new country, residence is a really, really good option that they might be considering. It's a comfortable option because they don't have to worry about much. Residence takes care of all of it for them. 
We have Harrington Hall and Vanier Hall, which are co-ed residences right on campus and Holy Cross House, which is our all female residence. These residences are located within a two to five minute walk from everything on campus. So they're very close and convenient. And they all have shared lounges, uh, kitchens, study areas, and they're very close to our cafeteria, which I've been on campus 20 years and I still have lunch in the cafeteria. So the food is really, really good. And our chef, our award-winning chef, Michael, uh, can work with students who have a variety of eating needs and make sure that they're able to find something that works for them. When students get here, we want them to feel supported and we really want them to be successful. So we have a lot of things in place like peer tutoring. We have counseling services, peer mentoring, financial aid advising. Um, we also have mental health coordinators. And so all of these services are here so that your students feel supported and are successful when they get here. And we also want the fun stuff. So we have a lot of clubs and activities, volunteer opportunities, a whole lot of things for them to become involved in. Theater St. Thomas is huge for students who like acting and drama and production. Students Union is a really big one, as well as our International Student Association, which is one of the most active clubs on campus and is probably one of the most fun. For varsity athletics, we have men's and women's basketball, volleyball, soccer, rugby, cross country, track, and women's hockey. And then for students who may not be interested in getting involved at that level, at the varsity level, we also have intramurals and we have a gym where they can just stay active and visit the gym on a daily basis. And that's included in the price of their tuition. After graduation, our graduates go on to do so many different things because they're gathering a set of tools that are applicable in a variety of different areas. They're getting the ability to communicate, write clearly, research, debate, um, so many things that are going to work in, in so many areas, but some examples are law, business, education, social work, psychology, communications and marketing is a really big one, fundraising, and so many more. So we have grads all over the world in uh, many interesting positions, and this really helps prepare them and get them there. Admission requirements is gonna be an important one. So for international high school applicants, they would complete an application online. There's a $55 application fee. We would get their high school transcripts and proof of English, English language proficiency. So IELTS, TOEFL, Duolingo, KL, Cambridge, we accept all of those. And then for students with English language proficiency, uh, we have an ESL program. So for example, if a student has an IELTS of five, uh, they would be accepted with an ESL condition. IELTS of 6.5 or above is regular admission. So ESL condition just means they would come for a regular school year, no extra cost, no extra time. They just get additional support to help them get up to the level for it to be successful within the Bachelor of Arts degree. So it's just a little extra support while they're here. And then they would move into the regular admission. Tuition and fees for the upcoming year. Uh, the annual tuition is approximately $18,000 Canadian. And then if you add in housing um, and meals, it would be just under uh, $30,000 Canadian for international students. So when you're thinking about the cost, we can also talk about scholarships. And we have scholarships available for students who are entering their first year of university from high school. Um, they're, they, are, there are a wide range of scholarships and it's one application to apply for all of them. The achievement scholarships recognize academic achievements. So the top grades are gonna be very important for these scholarships. And some of them also recognize um, extracurricular involvement in their community or in their school. The thing that's important to remember about scholarships is if you have students applying, we recommend that they apply early uh, because after they become accepted, they have access to their scholarship and bursary forms. So they apply, become accepted, and then can apply for scholarships and bursaries. And the deadline to apply for those is March 1st. Bursaries are based exclusively on financial need and the application is the same as for the scholarship application. These are valued between $500 and $5,000 Canadian and a March 1st deadline for those as well. And then uh, for students, uh, we really recommend them taking a virtual tour with us online. And these are led by current students who can talk to them about the courses that they're in, their experience at St. Thomas. We can match them up with a student who has similar interests 
And they can also have a meeting with an admissions counselor or meet with a faculty member in a program that they're interested in. So if students are interested in campus tours, they would just visit uh, email tours at stu.ca or work through MSM and we can schedule them in on a campus tour. And then we also have a series of virtual events through the year. And these are thematic. There's open houses, there's residence series, there's faculty panels. So they really help you get to know the people on campus and a little bit more about the university. And for the year, they're all listed at the website, stu.ca backslash dates. And then to get a really good feel for the university, we recommend uh, following us on social media and we'll post pictures regularly on campus and you'll get a feel for the activities that are happening on campus. So our social media channels are a great place to go as well. So with that general overview, I know it was fast, a lot of information, but I wanna to get to the point of the presentation, which is to talk a little bit more about the programs that you're interested in hearing about. So with that, I will hand the screen over to Natalie Carrier, who is one of our admissions counselors and who will talk to you about these programs. Thank you, Natalie. Thanks so much, Kate. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. As Kate mentioned, my name is Natalie Carrier, and I'm an admissions counselor here at St. Thomas University, and I am also a proud Stu alum. I graduated with a degree in international relations and political science in 2019. And today I'm here to talk with you about our communications and public policy, international relations, and journalism programs. So I'm going to start off first with communications and public policy. So communications and public policy explores how people communicate, implement, and evaluate public policy. This program focuses on both public and private sector communications and how this does impact public policy. This allows for students to analyze how the way that people communicate impacts governments and organizations and how they work and develop. Through our communications and public policy program, students not only learn how to communicate, but they also learn how to communicate with other people, whether that is through discussing social media or through presentations that are done within the class. This is why our communication students are so successful in any discipline that they decide to go into, as in every area, how individuals communicate is a necessary tool. Something that many of our students decide to do is to double major with other programs such as our journalism program, which touches on media and how information reaches different groups of individuals. Our students through our communications and public policy program not only get the opportunity to learn about the topic, but we also offer experiential learning opportunities in areas such as the government, where they truly get to be in the middle of the policy writing and communications process, which gives them real world experience within any field that they then decide to go into upon graduating. Next, I'm going to quickly touch upon our international relations program. International Relations is a program housed within our political science department, which helps students to broaden their perspective and understanding of the forces shaping global politics. This program gives our students a global perspective and really discusses the effects that countries have on one another. Within the International Relations program, students are asked to take a variety of courses on comparative politics, along with courses in international relations theory to fully develop their understanding of the topic. These, along with our exciting country-based courses on topics such as US foreign policy, the European Union and Europe, or international relations in the Asia Pacific region are what our students really come to study as it allows for them to learn about areas of the world that are of interest to them. In order to get a fully rounded education in international relations, our students are also asked to take either a minor in economics or a foreign language. This is in place in order to help students fully understand the effects that countries have on one another, whether that is through trade deals or diplomatic relations. Our students who graduate in international relations go on to do a variety of different things, whether that is working in international business, working for the government, or involving themselves in humanitarian work, all in addition to attending graduate schools around the world. Next, I'm going to briefly touch on our journalism program. The journalism program at St. Thomas University explores the art of storytelling in the digital age. Students learn how to communicate clearly and effectively through a variety of multimedia tools to ensure that their audience understands what the stories they write are aiming to say. 
We offer courses within this program in social media, radio and podcasting, and written slash video journalism, which allows for students to feel comfortable using a variety of journalism techniques. All of our journalism professors were journalists, so our students are able to learn from experts in the area that they are studying. Students in the journalism program at St. Thomas also have the opportunity to take courses at the Fredericton branch of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, also known as the CBC. At the studio, the basement is dedicated specifically to the journalism program at St. Thomas, which allows for our students to get real world experience using professional equipment and get to know professional journalists. This not only allows for our students to get journalism experience, but also helps them build a network with people in a profession that they are interested in joining. Our students graduate from our journalism program with the skills to communicate with others that can be used in any discipline that they decide to go into. Many of our students do go on to traditional journalism jobs, such as becoming professional journalists, while others decide to attend graduate schools or take untraditional paths towards areas such as marketing or business. And that's just a little brief overview of three of our programs here on campus. Next, I'm just going to introduce our two students that are joining us today, Megan Gibson and Estefania Martinez, who are current students here at St. Thomas. So hi everyone, um, it's such a pleasure being able to speak with all of you today. Um, my name is Megan and I'm a fourth year student and I'm double majoring in political science and international relations with a minor in Spanish. So to start off, I wanted to tell you that I'm from Nova Scotia, which is the neighboring province to New Brunswick. So I live about five or six hours away from Fredericton. And when I chose to, I decided that I wanted to live on campus. Um, it's a decision that I'm very happy about. I really enjoyed my time in residence. I found it really nice to be able to be close to class. And I met a lot of my best friends in residence, which was really nice. I love the convenience of being able to meet up with people for a study day or just to kick back and relax and have lots of fun. Um, and that's how I always like to describe residence. It's a very supportive community and environment that you live in, but it's also a lot of fun. Um, and I actually enjoyed residence so much that I ended up living in Vanier Hall two years in a row. So that just goes to show how much I enjoyed my time there. And that really is one of my favorite things about Stu is our tight, tight knit community. And when I first visited campus, it was the welcoming staff and students that really drew me to St. Thomas. And I can wholeheartedly say that Stu has really exceeded my expectations and is part of the reason why I love working as a tour ambassador and welcoming new students as well. So now to talk a little bit more about um, the studies at Stu. So during my program, I've had the opportunity to learn inside and outside of the classroom. And I'm so grateful for all of the wonderful mentors I have found here. And at St. Thomas, your profs really want you to succeed and are eager and willing to help you whenever you need it. So one quick story I wanted to share is um, I had a time in, during my studies that I was taking a test. Um, my test didn't go too well, which was pretty disappointing for me. And I was a little bit upset about it. But luckily, when I went to see my prof, she could not have been more kind or understanding. And in that moment when I was struggling, she was so encouraging and was really there for me and helped me work through that. So it's something I've never forgot because it really meant so much to me in that difficult moment. And that's what I've always found at Stu is whenever I have been stuck on an assignment or need help finding resources or just want to talk about an idea or talk about life, um, my profs have always been there and they've been a great resource for me. And that's the really nice thing about being a small campus is you get the opportunity to develop that one on one connection with your professors and other students in your class. And to me, I think that makes our programs even more meaningful. And another great thing about a liberal arts degree is you get to take classes in many other subjects. So for example, I took a communications class on the United States election this past year. And even though communications is not my major, I absolutely loved it and learned so many new things from taking that class with a new professor. And now to talk a little bit more about political science and international relations, because that's my degree. Um, so the reason I really enjoy it is because it covers very current information and there are always exciting stories to learn about. And I've had the opportunity to broaden my horizons and learn more about our own government here in Canada, as well as different types of governments that exist in other areas of the world. 
I have learned about leaders, political theories, different careers, economics, communications, and how the world works all throughout my program. And it has helped me to challenge the things I learn about and really become a critical thinker. And one benefit to having students from all around the world on our small campus is that when you're sitting in class, not only are you able to share your opinions and ideas, but you're able to listen to the opinions and ideas of other people that are from other countries. And I was actually really excited um, when I was reading more about the presentation today to learn that there might be people from Bhutan on the call because in my first year, I took a, a political science class on comparative politics and we studied Bhutan and I thought it was such a fascinating country and I couldn't help imagine how interesting it would have been if I was sitting next to someone from Bhutan in the class. And now a little bit, so aside from being an active student in the classroom, there are also tons of opportunities to get involved on campus as well. And throughout my time at STU, I've held roles with the International Student Association as well as the Students' Union. And those opportunities really helped me to grow my leadership skills. And I developed really awesome connections with the students I worked with in those roles. And at STU, that's a, a big thing at STU is we have lots of activities to get involved in. We have tons of events throughout the year, such as the cheer off, yoga nights, the winter formal, paint nights, dog therapy. And there's so many different ways to get involved with the activities that you enjoy. Another thing at STU is we have lots of employment opportunities. So I've been fortunate enough to work during my time at STU and I've thoroughly enjoyed working as a campus tour ambassador and welcoming new students to campus over the past couple of years. And it's definitely been one of the highlights of my time at STU. So since there are so many great opportunities to be employed on campus, I definitely recommend that you check those out when you arrive in Fredericton. And to end things off, I just want to encourage you all to ask questions, to get involved, and to have so much fun while you're at STU. Um, our community will be ready and waiting to welcome you, and I really hope that you find the program that is perfect for you. Thanks. Sorry. Hi, everyone. I am Estefania Martinez, and I, it's a pleasure being here with you all. I am an international student from Honduras, and my major is going to be international relations and economics. And a minor, I still to be decided. And well, my experience is very different because I have only been online and here in Honduras. I haven't been on campus yet, but I cannot wait to be there. And, and so, yes, my experience is totally different, but really the opportunities and everything you can get involved with is really the same. For instance, in my first year, um, I still was involved with many clubs. I was involved with Global Brigades, with Inactus. I was even a project manager of Inactus, so there's even leadership positions. I was in the activities committee. I was in the first year committee. I was in Venezuela. And and there's so much more clubs that they were um, working. And yeah, there's so much involvement. And also I really enjoyed about the same events as everyone else um, and really how Stu um, made that online process work. It was really welcoming and really, I felt like home even though I was far away from Canada. And, and yeah, I think that is, one good part of being a small campus because because it is small like there's so much more things they can do to like make students feel welcome so even though my my experience was online i really think i really think it was like the same great experience and the same opportunities and about the international relations uh, courses well uh, the first thing that i love more about uh, the international relations is the courses and how caring the teachers are as megan was saying teachers are very caring because it's a small university they can help you furthermore they really don't they don't really don't just don't, don't don't just see you like a number or a name they see you like a person and feelings and everything else they help you it's really easy to reach out um and because they really want you to to learn um, and also a good part about having a small class is that it is smaller classes, big discussions. For instance, my favorite course this year was global politics, 
which was pretty much like an introduction to the whole international relations scope. And because it was very small, we really could do big discussions. I could even discuss with my teachers, even if it was online. We discussed from uh, through Zoom about uh, political matters and things that are going around the world. And it was really refreshing because being online and being in Honduras the whole year, it was not easy. Uh, but the teachers and the students made it feel very welcome and very at home as if I was in Canada. Um, and well, apart from that, uh, there's also other classes I could take that were not really in the international relations uh, plan. Uh, for instance, understanding environmental uh, problems, which is not in the international relations uh, courses. It still helped me a lot with the uh, view on how international relations work and also matters that really matter. For instance, uh, climate change, uh, the greenhouse effect, everything like that. It really helped me shape like what I understood about international relations and also what matters. Also a class that I'm looking forward to since I'm going to my second year and I'm still missing some time uh, and still. Uh, it is comparative politics of the developing world. Uh, it is I'm really interested uh, because, well, I really am interested into looking how the developing world uh, works and how we can change it since Honduras is a developing country and I'm really looking forward to how I can improve. And I really believe that Sue can help me into getting ready for that. And what I also like about international relations is that we just don't learn from a textbook. Yes, we do read the textbook and everything else, but we also learn from current events uh, I even have the habit now about of reading the newspaper every day or even like once a week just to know what is going on. And well, it has made me be an informed citizen. And I just believe that uh, how um, the teachers teach uh, those topics is really interesting because it's just not writing essays or just um, learning stuff. Uh, doing notes it's really like putting into action making discussions making arguments which is really an important power part of being in international relations other than that i am really happy at being at stu uh, i'm really enjoying international relations and even other courses that i have like fine arts i have even had fine art classes that i have loved so much and really helped me uh, with that liberal arts education and as an international student, I feel very welcome. There's a really huge, big international community. Stuisa really makes sure that every international student is welcome. For instance, when I arrived to campus, I had so much help. I didn't even know like what help to choose. I had friends that helped me that were already in Canada. I have a big bodies because there's a big body program that you can apply to where a Canadian student and an international student help you. Uh, with the welcoming process and they help you personally because you have one body or two bodies and I had two bodies and they still helped me and there was also the first year experience where um, there was a group of people who helped you as well and what I'm trying to say is that there was just so much help and like just so much welcoming and that I really didn't even know like uh, what helped to choose because there was just so much help and that is a great part of the community because it is a really tight knit community that really cares about um, helping you and helping you succeed and getting to the next level. And even as an international student who has not been in Canada yet, I have even had opportunities to apply to jobs and even get hired. For instance, with the Equinian, um, I will be the social media editor uh, for, for this upcoming year and help us like, also the campus tour ambassador. So, there are just so much opportunities for international students. And that is something really important for international students, I know, because, well, that's something we're looking forward to a lot and also feeling welcome. And that is exactly what to do and make sure we are, which is great. I wouldn't, I could not imagine myself being in another university and being such um, more welcome than this. <laughs> And well, again, I want to encourage you to ask more questions and any inquiries. And yeah, I would be glad to answer all of them. Oh. Um. 
Okay, thank you, Estefania. Appreciate it. So, Ravinder, um, we might be going into question and answer. Uh, yes, Kate, thank you so much for all your valuable feedback and uh, points. Um, thank Natalia and to all both of our students, Megan and Natalia for uh, contributing their efforts and make us more uh, clear about the programs which we are offering. So I'm yes. requesting all our listeners to uh, raise up with their question. They can uh, ask any their uh, doubts clearly and openly without any hesitation. We are welcoming to see your questions that how we can help you out in, the, in your concerns. I hope I am audible to you, to everyone, or uh, all the participants. Yes. So any scholarship program? Uh, yes, we are offering scholarship to the deserving students who are scoring uh, equivalent to A or higher in grades. And uh, the deadline for scholarship is 1st of March 2022. So hurry up with your queries and hurry up to apply in St. Thomas University before the scholarships get over or the seats get full. And we want to uh, see you on board with us. So please. Uh, also, Kit, I want to elaborate or you can say uh, I want to add certain points in Yes, uh, so we get a question from Mr. Babutunde. Is there any benefits for uh, students from Africa? I can take that one, Ravinder, if you like. Yeah, yeah, please. Okay, excellent. Yes, we would love to have students. We, we really love to have students from Africa. Um, the benefits would be similar to, to all of the benefits that Estefania and Megan talked about for international students, um, but we welcome applications and would love to work with, with your students. Uh, Kate, the second question here, we have a uh, Bachelor of Education is an 11 month program. What about PSW, post-study work permit? Minimum to avail PSW is one year or more than that? Excellent question. Um, that's right. The Bachelor of Education is an 11 month program, but it's after a four year Bachelor of Arts degree. So it would be five years total and you would get your Bachelor of Education credential and be able to teach. The Bachelor of Social Work program, it has currently undergone a little bit of change. So I'm going to hand this one over to Natalie, who has more updated information on this program. Thank you so much, Kate. Yes. So as Kate mentioned, our Bachelor of Social Work program, if you have any students that are interested, has recently changed. Previously, it was similar to the Bachelor of Education program, where it was only a post-degree program and it was 16 months after a four-year degree. We have recently changed this, so our students are now able to apply to a Bachelor of Arts straight from high school. And then after doing two years in our Bachelor of Arts, they can apply into our Bachelor of Social Work program and complete an additional two years. So within four years, they would then be able to graduate with a Bachelor of Social Work degree. Done. Uh Natali, uh, we have a question. Uh, Bachelor of Education is an 11 month program. And um, what about uh, the PSW, the post study work permit? We can avail it minimum with one year, or we have some other criteria or uh, uh, things which we have to take care of while applying in the Bachelor of Education? Yes. Yeah, so, my understanding is. With the Bachelor of Education, as Kate mentioned, you do have to do a four-year degree first. So it would be 11 months in addition to a four-year program, meaning that you would be in Canada for more than one year, which would then make you eligible to apply for a post-study work permit upon graduating. Okay. 
then we have a second question from Mr. Ankush Sahani. What is the deadline of Jan 2022 for the scholarships? So uh, Jan 2022 intake, uh, we are offering scholarships. So we want to know, uh, Mr. Ankush wants to know about the deadline for applying uh, the scholarship. For scholarships. So I would uh, typically the scholarships, um, the deadline is March 1st and we look at it for the following September. But for students who are applying for January, that is an ongoing kind of rolling deadline as we see uh, what scholarships are taken up from the September and what is left over for the January intake. So the deadline that we have fewer students joining us in January, the majority of our students join in September. Um, so that is kind of a deadline that we would work with students who are applying in January on and give them information on. Uh, thank you, Kate. Then we have one another question from Mr. Shivam from Nepal. What is the academic requirement for UG program for the NAPTI students? Okay, uh, thank you for that question. That is a question that we're going to have to connect with our director of admissions on um, and maybe Ravinder, we could send that answer out to the group after the presentation. Sure, Mr. Shivam, I'll drop my email address to you and I'll connect with you over the phone or over the WhatsApp with the required detail. Thanks for asking the question. Uh, moving forward, how much gap acceptable uh, gets? This is a very common question which we came to uh, came across on regular basis. So if the student is like passed out from 2015 or 14 or 16, so how we can uh, proceed in two? A gap is acceptable from our perspective for admission. We would just go back and look at their final year of study and base their admission on that. So a gap is acceptable for us. Um, and then it would depend on their visa process and how that goes, because that might affect the visa process more than it would affect their admission process. Okay, but I think if I'm not wrong, uh, if it is justified, like a student pass out in 2015 or 16 and uh, later on, he's continuously uh, involved in some kind of uh, uh, professionalism, like uh, working with any hotel or with any of the uh, background, they have the relevancy to prove it that yes, they are not vacant or they have done these kind of things like with their offer letters, appraisal letters and salary slips. I think then we can, uh, are we able to accept the application? We can definitely accept the application. Yeah, and we would look back at their their education history and their um, ESL requirements if, they're, if they exist and we would base their admission on that. Thank you. Uh, then the reward from uh, Mr. Shivam, I hope uh, from Nepal, I hope you get the answer from our admission expert, Ms. Kaya. Coming forward, uh, Mr. Babantu, I would like, I would be glad to know much more about the tuition fees and postgraduates and undergraduates international students. So Mr. Babatunde, uh, you would like to know more about the fee structure that we can uh, share over the emails with you. Uh, but I'll request Ms. Kathleen to elaborate if uh, they want Absolutely. to close it here. Yeah, Kathleen, uh, we want to know about the postgraduate fees and undergraduate fees for the international. Sure. Um, well, the undergraduate fees are for tuition roughly 18,000 Canadian a year. Um, and then the post degree program, Natalie, do you have updated fees on that for this year? Hi, Kate. Yes, I do. So for our Bachelor of Education program for international students, it would be $21,806 Canadian for just tuition that does not include any living costs or additional fees. For our Bachelor of Social Work program, that would be $17,425 Canadian. Also, that does not include any housing, food, tuition, and uh, it, it's only strictly tuition. Thanks, Natalie. So uh, what are the opportunities uh, for a student if they are looking as a part-time work uh, inside the campus. Uh, I know 
I, I have the rights to answer this, but still, Catherine, I'll forward it to you. Absolutely. Um, we love having student workers on campus and the jobs can be any level of responsibility that a student would be looking for. Um, so they could help a professor on a research project. And a lot of times our, our undergraduate students will actually get published in research with our professors, which is an incredible opportunity that is normally reserved for students at the graduate level at most universities. So there could be that, that you're working with a professor or like Megan and Estefania, you could be a tour ambassador with my office. Uh, my office hires you know 30 to 40 students a year and we really look forward to having that student perspective when they're meeting with prospective students um, and there's i mean you can work in the gym so there's so many opportunities and if a student is looking for a job it's a really good system that's set up where jobs are advertised in one central location and they can start applying for them as they become available it's good experience where for every job you have to do an interview. So you're getting that experience. You have to submit a resume. And we have um, people on campus, staff on campus, who can work with students on developing their resume and developing their interview skills and making sure that once they graduate, they have these things in place um, so, so that they're able to apply for jobs in the real world as well. Students can also work off campus when they're here too. But I, I like on-campus jobs simply because we understand that you're a student first and your job comes second. So during exam time where we understand if you can't work as many hours and we're a little bit easier that way than maybe if you're in the general population. So there are options on and off campus though. That's great, thank you. Uh, next question uh, we have from Mr. Rohit Gala. Uh, can you explain the part-time work permit rule? The part-time work permit. Um, Natalie, do you have information? Natalie is an international student who came to us um, and so would have gone through a little bit of that process. Natalie came from the United States. Natalie, do you have anything for that? Yes, so international students are eligible to work up to 20 hours a week during the school year and more during designated official breaks that typically they're able to work both on and off campus, but students are not eligible as international students to work full time while attending university. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, then we have one more question from Ms. Sangeeta Shakya. What is the total time of issuing offer letter for undergraduate students? Uh, Ms. Sangeeta, I'm really sorry. At present, we are only offering undergraduate degree programs. We are not offering uh, postgraduate programs. So uh, Natalie or Ms. Catherine will answer you this right because they both are from the admission department. Sure, for the undergraduate degree program, um, we work really closely with MSM on the applications. And the goal is to have offer letters uh, about, uh, what would you say, Ravinder, about a week and a half or two week turnaround? Uh, normally we turn around with Sangeeta in uh, seven to 10 working days until and unless if there is any holiday or vacation are in between. So normally, in 10 days, you get the answer from our team. Either the application is accepted with the offer letter, or we are able to provide the offer letter or not. Uh, then uh, I have a question from Mr. Rohit. Okay, uh, what is the minimum gap accepted after plus two? So uh, Ms. Sangeeta, as I, uh, I would like to inform you that if it is justified, like while going back to their academic records, their presence in the schools or uh, their overall uh, records, like they are vacant or they are doing some part-time work or full-time work. By considering all those things, we are uh, accepting the application if the gap is on a higher level of uh, time duration. But yeah, if it is like considering the current scenarios, that again be considerable, but for that, we need to assess the profile, what exactly gap you are talking about, like it's a two year gap, one year gap, or more than that. I hope Kate, I'm right here. So I hope we are able to answer all our uh, 
question to the respected attendees. Um, we, here we are able to present also why we call ourselves a small university of big opportunities because we're offering 30 different specialization in different programs and the benefit to the students that mathematics is not required in any of our specialization program. I have one more question here with Mr. Salman Hussain. Okay, thank you, Mr. Salman, for being the participant and taking out your spare time from your busy schedule. Anything you want to add, Ms. Catherine, uh, to our viewers and our listeners? Um, I guess I'd just like to take a minute to thank everybody for taking the time to listen to the presentation and learn more about St. Thomas. We are so excited to work with students and help them have the same experience that Megan and Estefania talked about. Um, so we are welcoming applications and happy to work with them. And I'd also like to thank you, Ravinder, for setting this up and organizing it for us to speak with everybody. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Catherine. And here, I'm sorry, uh, we have a few more uh, interesting questions okay. uh, from Mr. Babantu. I would be glad to know much more about the tuition fees of postgraduates and undergraduates international students. So, sir, first of all, uh, I would like to inform you that we are only offering undergraduate programs. We are not offering postgraduate programs and post the fee structure, I'll connect you with Ms. Natali. Uh, Ms. Natali, I request if you can write up on the uh, fee structure once again. Yes, so thank you so much for that. For international students entering into our Bachelor of Arts program in Canadian dollars, it is 17,208. That's only strictly tuition. For our Bachelor of Social Work program for international students this upcoming year, this is always subject to change a little bit every year. So if you have students coming in the next couple of years, these numbers could be slightly different. But in Canadian dollars, it would be $17,425. And for the Bachelor of Education program, it would be in Canadian dollars, 21806 Uh, thank you, Natalia, for lighting up on the fee structure. Uh, one more question. Can students with higher national diploma be given admission for master's program? Uh, Ms. Babantane, uh, I'm really apologize here that we are not offering any master's program as of now. But yes, in future, if we are enrolling uh, or we start uh, anything related to the masters or the postgraduates, we will love to get in touch with you and we welcome your students also. Any more questions? Uh, I'm waiting for the more, in, uh, to make it, make the session more interactive and more informative because with your help, I also learned so many things uh, with your questions and the rewards from the Catherine and Natalia and our, uh, our brilliant students. Uh, so, Ms. Catherine, as uh, you told us that we are located in the heart of uh, Fredericton, I suppose uh, I've never been to uh, Fredericton, but I suppose there are a lot of uh, part-time job opportunities uh, outside the campus as well. Like uh, our, uh, our students get involved more with the hospitality partners or any, uh, you can say, we can say uh, food restaurants sort of uh, things. Absolutely. Um, that's a really good point, Ravinder. And we'll have to get you to Fredericton to have a visit so that you can see the town for yourself as well. But uh, there are a lot of jobs in hospitality because there are so many restaurants and 
um, things like that. So if students want to work off campus, that's one option. Uh, but there's also um, the tech industry is really huge in Fredericton. So there's also jobs for students who want to get involved in business and marketing. Um, there's government. So for our political science students, they have opportunities to work with the government. Uh, so there is a variety of jobs off campus as well. And that's certainly open to them. Oh, that's great. Uh, so I think we are actually fulfilling our tagline, uh, a small university of big opportunities by offering such a brilliant and uh, demanding programs under our roof. And also, which is the more interesting and more uh, uh, informing thing about the students that we also support you and your students in every way, like uh, inside the campus and outside the campus by offering uh, job opportunities. And our sports centers are always ready to help you out in all your uh, concerns related to the residence advisory, related to the mental health and care, uh, peer tutoring, peer monitoring. So you take out the name and we are always there to stand with the students to support in every uh, situation, either it's a tough situation or uh, anything related. Our entire team and our experts are always there. Uh, I receive a question. Do your university offers jobs to graduate from your university? Uh, Catherine, I would like to take you uh, to answer this question. Absolutely, we certainly do. Uh, it just within my office, uh, half my team are international students who are hired straight after graduation. And across the university and among other teams on campus, there are a lot of students getting jobs out of uh, right out of graduation. Our residence office would be one. Um, so jobs on campus is, is not a problem at all. And being here for four years and getting to know the staff and getting to know the offices is a real benefit. When you apply, the people who are reading your application and who are interviewing you know you already and maybe have had the chance to work with you as a student. And so that gives your application, it really lets you stand out. Um, for example, Natalie worked as an admissions counselor when, during her time as a student here as well, and then was hired directly out of graduation. Uh, Sophia was hired right before she graduated and actually graduated while she was working in the office. So there are opportunities to stay and we love to have as many students as possible stay on campus. And I think that students also love, they don't want to leave right away because they've had such a good experience. So I think they also love to get those opportunities to stay on campus too. That's, that's actually interesting. So you complete your education and then and there you get the job opportunities which brighten up your career in all the prospective ways. That's right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I have uh, one more question from Mr. Lovely is, uh, please confirm how much tuition is to be paid before accepting the offer letter, uh, issued offer letter. So we have a $100 confirmation fee that helps us reserve your spot and know that you're serious about coming. And then the tuition payment, Ravinder, do you have more information through MSM on the de deadlines that you guys would require payment? Uh, so as uh, Mr. Lovely, uh, as you uh, receive the offer letter or you want to pay before uh, the offer letter, you can pay us uh, $200 for the seat reservation in case any delay of uh, uh, from the high commission side or from any other uh, circumstances. So you can reserve your seat by paying $200 or as Catherine said, $100 directly uh, to the university and will reserve your seat once you get the clearance from uh, the high commission or uh, from the visa department of the high commission. You can uh, pay the remaining fee uh, while before entering the campus. I mean, before uh, flying from your respective country. Uh, so we have one. Question from Mr. Rohit Gala. Uh, he wants to know what are the on campus placements that you offer? Like, what is the placement conversion? Interesting question. 
Uh, so Catherine, over to you. On campus placements uh, in terms of job placements? In job placements, uh, conversion ratio, uh, they want to know about it. So for example, how many students apply as opposed to how many students would get the jobs? Uh, yes. So I also put my uh, feedback here that Mr. Rohit, uh, as we told you that 97% of our students get the satisfaction uh, reward and feedback to us. Um, they are happy to graduate with the school. And even Ms. Catherine also elaborated this thing to us uh, that the maximum students who are graduating or who are completing their education in respective terms from the university, they are getting the job then and there itself. Also, uh, yeah. Also on the same, I would like to uh, inform you that uh, SCU also organized the job fairs on campus. So there are a lot of job opportunities which you can easily find out across the globe which are the most demanding uh, job opportunities for an liberal art graduate student. It's not a uh, normal arts like uh, in our country in India, uh, the liberal art program uh, reshaped the student in many uh, different uh, perspectives, like uh, their, the thought process of the students get changed. They have, the, uh, they have that confidence to uh, face any challenge uh, in the world and they can uh, you also uh, can say their thought process uh, completely change the uh, diversity or diversity of the thought process is enhanced and they can adjust themselves or they can grab any opportunity across the globe they open the multiple uh, field for them after uh, graduate from a liberal art university here, I'm talking about the liberal art programs and liberal art universities. I'm not specific with the uh, with our university, but yes, uh, our university is one of the most preferred university across the globe and in Canada for the liberal art teaching program. I would agree, Ravinder, with um, job prospects. We don't have an overall number with graduates every year, but we do have, uh, we've just completed a series of meetings with each department on campus. And so we've heard about their success rates of their graduates um, as they graduate. And for example, we met with our fine arts department just this week, and they were saying that every student who applied to a graduate program, highly competitive graduate programs, got into the program that they wanted to get into. Um, students from psychology have been entering into clinical work, but also uh, our students can go into med medical school afterwards. So we really help prepare them to get the skills that we need, but it's a very personalized process. So you're working with academic advisors, you're working with our career development team, um, and you're ensuring that when you graduate, you have the skills and experience that you need to then move into the field that you want to move into. So we're helping you get job experience, we're helping you prepare for those applications and uh, that helps them move into fields where they're, they're interested in moving into. So, so the success rate is very, very good. Uh, thank you, Kathleen. And I have one more question uh, that is concerning the uh, student security. So how safe are international students within and outside our university? Oh, I love that question. Um, I consider New Brunswick and Fredericton, but especially our campus, a very safe place to be. Uh, we have a campus security system that is available and patrolling all the time. We have a safe ride program and a safe walk program so that students never have to um, walk anywhere by themselves. Uh, somebody will come and meet them and walk with them, or they can get a drive for free, get picked up and brought back to residence. Um, maybe I will, because I've been doing a lot of talking, maybe I'll pass it over to Megan to talk about how she's felt on campus as a student. Sure. Um, so like Kate said, um, Fredericton is very safe. I've never felt unsafe on campus um, and neither have any of my friends. And like Kate mentioned, there's lots of great services available for students to ensure that they also feel safe on campus, like our safe walk and safe ride programs. Um, it's also a very well lit campus. So there's lots of lights around. And because it's a very small community as well, 
um, most people, there's always someone around and I've always felt very safe in Fredericton. Thanks, Megan, for your valuable uh, input here. So uh, thank you, Katrin, Natale, uh, Stephania, and Megan for all your valuable uh, input and contributing your valuable time for all our viewers and listeners who are joining here with us. Um, Ms. Sangeeta, thanks to you as well. And I would like to say thanks to all our participants who are with us here. And till we connect uh, next time, uh, either in person or over the uh, 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 platform of Zoom or like a Google Meet. Stay connected, stay safe, and keep sending us good numbers of application. And we love to see your students on board with us. Thank you. Uh, thanks to all of the participants and the panelists for all your uh, uh, valuable time. Once again, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I have, I got one question here. Rakism is one of the major factors which most America, uh, sorry, Africans are not ready to study abroad. How did you treat this if arising? That's a very good question and, and timely. Um, so I'm just going to confirm uh, it's r racism with Africans. Okay, so our campus is a diverse campus and very welcoming of diversity. Um, we also have a Black Lives Matter group on campus that has been doing a lot of work. Uh, we have a Black History Week uh, where we're educating students and updating them on current events, but also on the past and making sure that everybody is up to speed and has the information that they need. Um, Natalie, do you have some anything to add to that? Because I do believe that we've been doing a lot of work on this and I feel that it's unacceptable on campus for any student to feel any amount of, of racism at all. And that's a priority on campus. Yeah, we do have quite a few African students that do decide to come and join us on campus. And together they have also created the Black Students Association on campus. Also outside of Fredericton, Fredericton is a, outside of campus, Fredericton is a very diverse city. We have a lot of ways to also get involved in the community. So there is a Black Lives Matter movement here in Fredericton, as well as a multicultural association. So there are a lot of people that come even from outside, just coming from university that do decide to move to Fredericton. Thank you, Natalia, for your input. Just to, to, for the last part of the question, um, it says, how do you treat this if it arises? And it's not something that we've had to deal with um, on campus really, but if, it, if, if there was an instance where racism was being apparent or, or pointed out, then that would be dealt with quickly and taken very, very seriously. Thanks, Ms. Catherine. I think this is one of the ma major problem nowadays with the international students. Uh, especially from the uh, Africa continent. But thanks for all your support and uh, the things which you are offering for the uh, Black students. Even I'm well aware with this that we have uh, Black Student Union and our presidents are also uh, from the same community uh, of the Student Union. Um, uh, don't worry, Mr. Bhavante, we always are there to support uh, each and every student, it's not from Africa, it's not from India, all over the across from wherever students trust on us and come to join us for their education uh, path, we are always there to support them. Ravinder, could I add, um, if there is students that you're working with who are concerned about this, I would be happy to work through MSM or, you know, and connect them with some of our students from Africa to speak with about their experience and what they've felt on campus as well, so that they could have that personal um, testimonial to, to how it's been for them. I think that is a very uh, uh, perfect initiative uh, from your and Catherine, and um, we love to do that.
so once again thank you uh, to all the uh, thank you so much for all the viewers and listeners who are uh, participating with us uh, um, thank you for uh, your interesting questions and very informative questions and i would like personally thanks uh, personally also from our attendees to miss katherine miss natale astanfinia and uh, miss megan for taking uh, time out from their busy schedule and uh, conducting this uh, beautiful webinar with us uh, till the time we start accepting application from all our viewers and listeners for the jan 2022 intake or i'm um, coming to meet them in person stay safe stay healthy thanks and bye bye enjoy the day bye everyone